Hola, and welcome to episode 117 of Word to Your Mama. Word to Your Mama is a podcast about the life of a Latina mama, that's me, and the lives of my amazing multicultural tribe, a celebration of shared experiences navigating this dynamic world. There'll be special guests, mad laughs, and absolutely no BS. Nah, B is our motto. Segments by the Supernatural Bear. He is now 10. He's going on 40. But other than that, this podcast will be explicit. Please believe it. So why do I always have a wide range of peeps on this show? Well, it's because I come from the music, art, and Web3 industries. New episodes drop every Monday. So this week, we have Rick H., He is the head content curator of The Rick H Show, and he also produces That's Your Reality podcast by Melanie and Chicklet. Um, We are also uh, brothers, uh, network brothers and sisters, siblings, if you will, because he's part, his show is part of the Latino Pods, and I'm part of the Latina Podcasters Network, both founded by Rita Bautista. And so this has been a long time in the making. Also, during this episode, Rick was very sick. Um, but he showed up anyways, because as you'll hear in the episode, uh, we've been trying to do this for a long time, kids, like months. So I was super excited that we finally got it done. Um, we had a great conversation during the recording and after, uh, you know, we talk about all the different things that he, he's into, um, some new things, some, some exciting news that he was able to drop and some things that are in the works so yes, let's get into it. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. I just want some. I want to take something off the list so I could just relax for a little bit. Yeah, you deserve it. I don't know how you do it. Um, Rick, I'm recording now. Rick, <laughs> I was to make sure I'm recording. Thank you so much for being on. If people knew the BTS of what we had to do, how long it's been, it's been in the works. For you we to we get have here. to share that. <laughs> um, I don't remember what the first problem was. What's up, everybody? I'm so happy to be on with Tia Mama. Uh, but uh, I don't know what the first instance. I know one time I was sick. Was it that yeah. I was sick? And yeah, one time you were. Happened. Yeah, one time you were like, oh, I can't do it. The first time you, like, to keep it 100, the first time it was I had a no a show. Yeah. <laughs> It was a yeah. No show. Then, and then the second time I had, like, I double booked, Six. and then I got sick, and I was like, Six. "Yo, I'm sorry. I've been apologizing to Rizzy for a while." Then I had her on the pod, and then we rescheduled it, and then something happened on her end. And but I was you like, never oh, got man. the message, and then, we, and then you're like, "Yo, are we still doing it?" Because I had, I was like, I think I hit you oh, up on the DM right. and did him, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. I told you a couple Everybody. of days ago." <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And I then, was, and you know, last <laughs> night I came back from recording uh-huh. and you had emailed me. And I was like, oh no, did I miss it? Is it tonight? <laughs> and I went on my calendar. And I was like, oh, it's tomorrow. <laughs> I, like, I got freaked out because I was getting ready to go to bed. And I was like, bro. <laughs> so we're here. Dude. And, and can, thank God. You're not a feeling 100% and you, you're still here. So, muchisima gracias, man, for being I owe it here. to you. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, with the network, when we have our meetings, you're one of the people that I look forward to seeing, oh, talking to. Same, um, same. I love your content. Um, you had my old co-host on your show. I thought that was fantastic. Um, yes, Jazz is not on the show anymore. Yeah, I was gonna. Uh, we're gonna. Doing... I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah. Okay. 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 But yeah, so um, you were on our pod, and I was like, man, uh, there's a couple more collaborations to come, so we'll see. <laughs> well, I'll go oh. to the West Coast one day. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. Um, I'm going to be, I just got, this is like, I don't know when, I don't know exactly when this is going to come out, but I haven't announced it yet. I just got asked to be a speaker at NFT NYC. So I'll be out there for like a week in April. In April. Maybe we can shoot something in person yeah. at the studio, at the new studio. So that'll be, that'll be dope. That'll be we'll great. see. Be yeah, great. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's Start, let's start. Let's start off like I always start off. Como estas? How are you? Besides being sick, and I'm fantastic. I feel amazing. 
Life is great. I got two wonderful kids, uh, an amazing wife, uh, work. Everything is great. You know, this, if, there's things that you complain about, but why waste time at that? But I'm, I'm doing great. That's great. So I'm here so, with so, you finally. Finally, dude, <laughs> finally. I'm so excited. So 2023 has been good so far. We're like, you know, a couple of weeks in. That's good. That's good to it's hear. Been, it's been great. New Year's Eve was fantastic. I got to spend it with not just my family and my wife, my wife's family and my family in the same household. And it was like the first time in a, in a long time we've done that. Mm. And it was it was great. And it was a great way to start the year. So energy's carried over. I have a ton of bookings that I got to get to, but I needed to get this interview done. And then, <laughs> you know, when I feel better, you know, because there's a couple of things that I'm, I'm going to be doing. Yeah, I can't wait for you to announce. That's going to be sad. You just told yeah. me, and I'm super excited. You guys are not ready. You oh, this, are not ready. I'll, I'll, I'll drop an exclusive right now. So okay. March, I think, is the date's not set in stone, but March 30th, I'm doing Latina Queens of Comedy. Oh, it's going to be a show featuring all Latin comics. It's going to be a live event. Um, The space, when I get the okay, I'll announce that, but I got some cute few comics already on board. So it's going to be a great show. Uh, looking for a liquor brand. I'm pretty sure I got it in the bag already. I know this event's gonna happen because, like, I just have to confirm everything. And, and then there's gonna be food. I think it's March 30th, last day of Women's History Month. Um, oh. Latina Queens of Comedy. Ah, uh, that's gonna be dope. Yeah, and as soon as you have all the information, spreading it for days for sure. I will send it to you. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, you know, you have so many titles and so many things that you do. So I was wondering when people, you know, you meet somebody. And they're like, Rick, what do you do? What do you say? What's your answer? I'm a regular smegular dude. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh no, it's many things, you know. I'm a dad, husband, and yeah, I have a podcast. But I don't always I don't bring any of that up. Like, I'll just have a conversation and usually I like to build an organic conversation with somebody and it leads to something, you know. Yeah. Um I like to talk about many different, I have tons of different interests, like art, music, movies, uh, cerveza, which I have on the <laughs> side here. Um, so I could talk about anything with anybody. Um, and it just comes out. I'm just a regular guy. That's because you mean. have listed podcaster, writer, producer, but, and you're so much, you uh, know, so many more other things than that. So that's why I was wondering, like, if mm. you're, say you're like at a social, like, you know, you meet someone and it's a friend of a friend or something like that, but. Say like you're at a networking event and someone was like, well, well what do you do? Uh, a creator is the title I've always liked. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I just like to put things together, honestly. Uh, if I'm passionate about a project like this, the comedy show I'm about to do is something I've been working on for a while. I did a podcast panel. Uh, it was media and podcasting and social media and podcasting. Um, and I like to put people and places i feel like because it happens now like people call me for specific things like oh you know I, I i'm looking for something in this area i'm like i know someone i got you mm. connect people so you're a connector like and a curator uh, yes curator is the yeah yeah so um that was rita sorry about that oh. <laughs> uh, Hola, rita. a friend of mine <laughs> a friend of mine <laughs> likes to call himself a content curator mm, mm. and i've I, like i never saw a phrase like that but a content creator content creator and he said he's a content curator um yeah, I like so that. I, I like that but i'm a creator you know i like to put things together yeah i like that too and you sound like you and i sound similar because i love that's yeah. like something i've done since i was a kid connecting people right like i'm always yeah. like Someone's like, oh, yeah, I'm starting to do this or I'm looking for this. I'll be like, you know who you should get with such and such, such yeah, and such. My homegirl, my homeboy. Da, 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 da. You know, I love that. I love pe putting people together. So a connector for sure. Um, so why don't you explain to the people uh, how I know you from the Rick 8 show, what it what the Rick 8 show is, what it's about. The Rick 8 show is just like Seinfeld is a show about nothing. <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> originally the first six episodes were a sports podcast and um 
it evolved from there. You know, I wanted to tell stories of people from my neighborhood, which is like the first few seasons. Then, you know, I started booking bigger guests, but I wanted to know the why. Like, mm. you know, you're Jesse Torero, you're Oz Rodriguez, you're Manny Perez, you're successful. Why and how? So that that's where the interview first started. Then it evolved into something where like we wanted to inspire other people from the stories of the guests. And then I just wanted to have fun and be funny because I realized uh, I love comedy so much. So I, I like to do an interview and have a good time with my guests. And a, and a good time and, it is because when we were on, I had a blast. Um, so what neighborhood are you from? Where are you born and raised? Uh, I was born in Harlem, raised in Washington Heights. I, uh, I think I was like two or three and then my family sent me to DR. I actually didn't know much English when I lived in the ER. My aunt had to shout out to my aunt. She actually taught me English over a few summers. And then they sent me back to the U.S. And I grew up in Washington Heights. So I'm from uptown. I'm to my hand. Nice. The re and the reason why I ask is because I wanted to uh, ask about one of, I'm, I'm imagining, I'm assuming it's one of your most requested or asked about guests. Uh, Ricky Smooth. And uh oh Ricky, Ricky Smooth. <laughs> nah, that guy is uh wow. Um <laughs> he's been ignoring my calls lately. I'm oh, trying to get him word. back on the show, but <laughs> but Ricky yeah, Smooth, he's just the R and B singer from the eighties. <laughs> he just never grew out of the <laughs> since he's since got Ricky a whole Smooth, slew of people. <laughs> since he's from, you know, Bayside Queens, I, I thought maybe you were from Queens because you know, as our as our network brothers, the hip hop advocates, when I had them on, yeah. if you let you rep tell you boys, if you let you yeah. tell you Queens is where mankind started. So I thought maybe you were from Queens and that's how you knew Ricky Smooth. <laughs> let me tell you something. My wife is from Queens. Uh -huh. So I was raised in the Heights. And then when we got together, we moved in together and then we got married and I lived in Queens for a few years. Queens is such a beautiful borough. It is so dynamic, so much different culture meshed into that one borough, so much history. Um, you look at the art and all that stuff that's come out of Queens. Um, coincidentally, my show is going to be shot in Queens now. So, oh. um, yeah, you rubbed. I love that dude. He's pretty funny. <laughs> He's hilarious. I had a great time with him. So, uh, and actually, you were supposed to be on, I think, before that. But anyways, you're here now, so that's all that matters. Yeah. But they were hilarious. I had a great time with them, um, talking hip hop and stuff. And they're Dominican, mm -hmm. you're Dominican. It's all trying to get love. Ricky Smooth on the hip hop advocates. Oh so we'll my see. god, that would be amazing. In Please studio. make that happen this year. It has he, to happen. He keeps ignoring my phone calls. What, what do you want <laughs> me to do, Ritzy? <laughs> celebrity. I'm gonna have a link to all your shit, but especially to. The Ricky Smooth content, so people have to see. Oh, that. his manager is going to be on the show soon. Uh, some of his boys, they're venting, and you know. Oh, nice. So I got some calls, and they want to do an exclusive expose day on him, and they're going to be on the show, so it's going to be pretty funny. Nice. So as you mentioned before, I had Jasmine, uh, and but on the, who who was your co-host? Let's talk about that. Like, yeah, there's some changes at the at the Rick H show. Talk about that. Yeah, season 14, uh, first episode was last week. Uh, Eddie Jazz was original my co originally my co-host, um, one of the original co-hosts. And she is actually a music artist, so she stepped away to finish two records um, that she's done with, and she was able to come back. But um, I was going to have them both on. Mm. But Jazz is working on her show, and she's doing more stand-up now. So she can't commit to a full season. She'll come back, and she'll be... Uh, she'll do spots, but um, she can't do a full season. And then Ellie said she's coming back and she's coming back full time. So oh. we did the first episode with Ellie back and it was it was pretty fun. It was like it was like she never left. Like it just came back like nothing. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. The last episode Jazz did was with. No, that was the other one. But before the last episode Jazz did, it was Ellie Jazz and Jasmine. I saw and they that. Both have the same... <laughs> the problem. They both have the same name. Excuse me. Sorry about that. I'm Pleasure, not feeling 100%. So <laughs> thank you. Um, 
they both have the same name and the chemistry between them is actually pretty funny too so i it, it was gonna be fun but i i get it you know there's no beef no animosity but- i immediately got texts phone calls and all that stuff and i was like this is ridiculous like <laughs> me and jazz got no problems she didn't unfollow me or anything she just she's writing a show and she's doing stand-up and she's also i don't want to say it but like the stuff that you're going to see from her this year mm. is completely different than what she's done in the past. Yeah. And it's going to make sense because it's going to build out to the end picture. So, like, it, we, she knew we were switching. I, like, we had a conversation. We're good. I can literally call her right now. And <laughs> there's no problem. Like, <laughs> don't DM me with BS. <laughs> That's hilarious because I was like, well, I saw that, you know, I hadn't seen the other post. So I saw the post with the, with your, you know, old new hope, you know, back, she's coming back. And I was like, oh. yeah. and I was yeah. like, oh no, you know, but then I saw your thank you post nah. and I was like, okay, it's all good. But I'm sure people were just looking out like, yo, do we, do we hate her now? Do Like, do we got beef <laughs> now? You know what? You know, so that, you know, yo, she's more, she's bigger <laughs> than me. Like people are hitting me up about her. I'm so happy. Like she's at that point right now. Um, She didn't originally, I asked her two years ago, if she wanted me the calls. She was like, mm, I'll think about it. And then we did a few events together. And then one day, like, I was just doing the show myself. And she hit me up. She's like, you know what? I think I, I'm ready to do it. I could commit to this. And we had so much fun. And it was the perfect season because I think it was the 11th one. And I dedicated that completely to comedy. And she came in and it gave it a whole different perspective. So oh. she's also part of the reason why I want to highlight female comedians. Um. A friend of mine is Rachel Aloka. She's outstanding with comedy as well. You know, Glorelli's, Ida Rodriguez is on HBO Max now. There's a lot oh. of talented, funny Latina women out there. So yeah. part of the reason why I want to put the show together. That's dope. Um, so let, let's get into the questions and comments from the audience. Okay. If you will. Um, okay. okay. It's a two-parter. What's your favorite podcast episode you've done? Part one. Oh, Part man. two, where do you see the Rick H show taking you? Um, okay. like what is that in the perfect world? What's the ideal outcome? Is it radio, TV, talk show? And this is from who were we just talking about? Jasmine Ruiz. Jasmine. She was episode 91 <laughs> guest on Where to Your Mama. Um Jazz knows I hate question uh I just <laughs> so many episodes i've done like and they're all you know i always say the Rodell one was amazing because i died laughing like the all the comedy ones i've done are my yeah. favorites yeah not to take anything away from anything else it's just i had such a good time in all of them every stand-up comic i have on has just killed it um the second part was radio um I, you know this, I want to eventually just do this full time and yeah. not have to do everything else and produce other shows on the side um, yeah. and help other people grow. So if I could, I'm almost there, build out a studio where I could just create and make, you know, a decent living out of it and express myself in many forms, then that's the goal. That's the dream. Yeah. Whether you want you... be in a movie or anything. You, you you don't want to, but if they, if they call, if they call, if the call comes to be in a movie. I'm doing a TV show this year, but it's it's just. Oh. Uh, Can you talk about it? <sighs> Ahorita no. If if it's not, if, if you can't, it's okay. No, I can't right now, but I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'll do some acting, but uh, that's not, you know, that's just something that like, yeah, I'm interested. I'll do it. I'll, I'll dip yeah. my toe in these things, but I have to come back to this. This is what gears everything else. This is what puts me in those rooms with these uh amazing talent you know they know me for this and i do this now this year people will not only know me for this but they'll know me for the other productions that i'm about to do and put out so it's gonna be fun this year it's gonna be a great year man um okay so now let's get into the not so rapid fire questions the aka slow as hell questions rick are you ready yes three words to describe yourself Oh my God. <laughs> I was ready to say yes, no, maybe. Uh, resourceful. Okay. Uh, passionate. Mm. Um, and I always, I always keep an open mind to everything. You know, I try to 
learn something new every day and mm. that could come from anywhere so it's not a word it's two words but you know yes we get the concept yeah, slow on that <laughs> that's why they're also oh. called the aka slow as hell questions next one what's okay. the best piece of advice you've received Ayuda a tus hijos y estudiantes a llegar más lejos. Aprende más sobre la beca nacional a ser de McDonald's. Desde 1985, McDonald's ha otorgado más de 33 millones de dólares en becas. Gánate una beca de hasta 100 mil dólares. McDonald's está dando 500 mil dólares en becas este año. Puedes ganar una de 30 becas hoy día. Es importante seguir adelante y hacer más. A ayudar a estudiantes hispanos a hacer más que las generaciones anteriores. A hacer más de lo que se creen capaz. A hacer más de lo que pensaban que era posible. Por sí mismos, por su gente, por su cultura, por un mejor futuro. Para más información sobre la beca nacional Hacer de McDonald's, visita mcdonalds.com diagonal hacer. Aprende más. Oh, my God. That's such a good... I'm stealing that question. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's not an advice. It's something I tell people, and I, and I try to think, too. Always... Uh, have an open mind, a compassionate heart, mm. and have fun. Those are the three things I try to do. And those are, I preach that to people and I'm trying to teach my kids that when they grow up. I, I love that. So, and I love that so much. And, you know, recently um, on LinkedIn, uh, someone was talking about they took a break from social media, like they needed to take a break. and. Um, and then she said that she came back and one of her, she does a, she's a host of women in tech. It's like this crazy big podcast. And her intern oh, said, I, I think I saw, saw that. Yeah. And then her intern yeah. said this great quote, and I'm going to mess it up and I can't find it right now, but it's like success is where there's love there. Like there's love in it, you know, like that's success, right? Like it shouldn't be because I make mm. the most money or blah, 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 blah. It's like, Success is, and I was yeah. like, I love that be, shit. Got to be love and passion in there, because yeah. otherwise, it's gonna feel like a job. Exactly. So. Like, what success? Like, that's real. I feel like because success looks different for everybody, right? Like, my success might look different from your success. Like, you know, people are yeah. like, Nah, I want to act. I want to be da 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 da. But I'm less like, I just want to provide. I want to be myself. Yeah, just but yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to do what I love, and that for me, también. Like, I remember. Back in the days, especially when I was younger, it seemed, uh, you know, growing up in the 80s, it seemed like you could only be one thing, right? But now you could be like multi hyphenated, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah. it changes. I, all I know is that I'm a creative. So one, one minute I'm making art, right? And I'm exhibiting yeah. around the world. Next minute, this is my outlet now, right now, you know, yeah. bringing people and, and, you know, sharing diverse voices. You got to you got the voice for this. You should have been doing this for years. That's on radio. I would love you on a morning show, playing some De La Soul records or something. That's crazy. That's because that I'm was putting, always I'm like putting that out there. <laughs> That's always that was my thing because I used to work uh, hip hop records, right? I used to do um, publicity mm -hmm. promotions for uh, for hip hop, underground hip hop, and that was my thing. Like that was the time everyone had a radio show, college radio show, and I was like, oh, I want to have it. So when I was in college. We, I had a radio show, but we never made it on air. And it was, we, but we did a practice run. So somewhere out there in the world, there's a tape that we did our practice. And it was, it was a hit, it was a hip hop show. It was called, my real name, my government name, Marissa and McComey's Hip Hop Hour. And then wow. NASA went, NASA went we on the airwaves to... and I couldn't get on. So sucked. No, we, we, uh, we, we can work on the name, but uh, we need to, <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, the Breakfast Club just lost one of the co-hosts. You know, maybe we can work out a deal. You could do it remotely from LA. Hilarious! hilarious. I did radio in college, and I, it was it was fun. I loved it. I love radio. Radio's similar to this, a little different, but right? Do you you had a hip hop show? 
uh, I had a hip hop show. I used to rap when I was like 18 in college, you know, young. Um, back when it wasn't, it wasn't viewed good for a Spanish guy to be rapping, <laughs> you know. Um, so you I rap quit. your intro. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's that's, that's not my you? friend. It's my friend that passed away. Uh, yeah, oh, that's his, that's one of his records. Thank this you. whole time I, I thought I mean, it was you. you. No, that that's art. That's art. I did a whole episode on him and explaining. Uh, so we when we launched the show, the show was created by me, my brother, and one of my friends, Paul. And somewhere along the line, me and my brother wanted to because that's he's like a brother to me and, and Benny. Um, we wanted to include him somehow. So I had all his masters. Ah. And I had asked his mother if it was okay to use the record as the intro of the show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you guys, because we made music together, me, him, and, and my boy Craze. And um, she said we had, she would let us use it. So it was like, dope. An and I told her that that would stay the intro to the show and I would never change it. Ah. I did change. The original song is different from the one that's on now. Ah. But it's still him. Oh, that's amazing. So I'm going to yeah. ask, I'm going to get that link for that episode because I want to listen to it and I, I want the people to listen to where. where oh, that's Pavel's episode. Oh, it perfect. Pavel's first episode. It was it was pretty good. And it was on his birthday. So like we did a whole tribute thing. It was pretty oh, cool. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put that. I'll put it in the show notes, kids. It'll be in there for sure. Um, Before I finish the, the last two not to rapid fire questions, uh, one thing that I missed <laughs> How did you, like, what, you you did radio, like, college radio and stuff, but when was the first, what, like, what was the, the catalyst for you guys to start the show? Um, Originally, like I said, sports show, right, sports podcast. I, we used to talk a lot of, like, smack at work, me, my brother, my brother worked with me at the time, and one of my friends. And I would watch Rogan, Button, a couple other pods. And I was like, man, I, I want to do one of these before mm. like it became. So I feel like afterwards, like a million podcasts came. Right. Um, so I was like, I think we could put a, a pretty good, decent show together. And I, I thought our conversations were interesting. Um, and I went ahead and I started it. Uh, it was a very long road of learning from that first episode, but, um, I, I stuck with it. It just became a passion. I loved it from the start. Was, was it, it video from the start? Time. No, it was just audio. Audio? When the did video it become came... video? Yeah. What year was that? 2018. And. So a friend of mine was also married to my wife's best friend, Justin. He was producing television shows and he's like, hey, yo, let me let me film the pod. You know, let's do a video. And he came on for a while. He was on quite a while and then COVID hit and we couldn't do live in person interviews anymore. Mm. So I had to do see. virtual. So that's why I'm excited to go back in person. In person. It's another vibe. It's, such a, it's so different. And I used to shoot in front of an audience. Oh shit. So I would have like 15, 20, 30 people watching us film the episode. And if if you landed a joke, it was like doing stand up, but doing yeah. this. It, the audience would laugh and you could feed off that. And then like, moving away from the mic, I'm messing up the audio, but the <laughs> audience would laugh. And um, it's such a, that's why I wanted to go back. It just needed to be the right situation. Yeah. And, this is where we're at now and it's the right situation that's amazing man i can't i can't wait for you to go back full blown i don't know like i don't know how you do it because you were you know i was kind of nervous being on your show being live like i can do this all live. day i can do this all day but live i get super nervous so right now i'm doing a lot of twitter spaces you know because of the yeah. web 3 shit that i'm doing yeah. And and everyone's like, you don't want to host? And I was like, I don't, it's live. Like for me, I don't know why it freaks me out so much, you know? So kudos no. to you for doing it on the regular. It's like getting on a bike. 
And then, <laughs> and then it, with cameras though, and then with studio audience, my friends were like, oh, maybe one day you want to do this. You know how they take the podcast, they'd go on tour. I was like, hell the fuck? Yeah. Like, I don't think so. Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I need an excuse to travel the U.S. and Yeah. Talk yeah. smack and I mean, I'll do people. You know, Rita knows like if she does, I'll do that for sure. Like, yeah. you know, go on, do that type of stuff. But I don't know. We'll see. But kudos to you, man. OK, let's finish off these questions. The next okay. one, one of my favorite questions. What is your song yes. to get you <laughs> to get you hyped when you need it? What's your go to one of your go to's? I mean, lately it's been a lot of Nas records. Mm. But um, I don't know. There's now I was thinking about this the other day. I listened to a lot of really older, like 90s, mm. 80s, early 2000 music. I don't have a go to song. It just depends the mood. Uh, I, I've always been a huge Linkin Park fan. Mm. So there's specific albums I go to when I need a specific type of energy to go to. Um, I just been uh, really mellow been listening to a lot of Nas lately. I don't have what is... Oh, I'm lying. I got it. Okay. So I'm a huge Bad Bunny fan. See. Si. In the last two months, the song Efecto has been my... That's your go-to. Song. Okay. Well, Bad Bunny... On the, rec- on the new record. Bad Bunny, that song, that track will be included on the Word to Your Mama guest hype li- list. <laughs> I always mess up the title, but there'll be a link in the show notes. We'll have everybody's you know, Effect songs on there. Fire and, record. And yours will be on there. And it, it, whoever's the latest guest, there goes to the top of the list. It's like up to maybe two, three hours now with everyone that I've had oh. on. So you're doing a playlist? This is dope. I like that idea. Yeah, I have a whole playlist. So it's from like Bad Bunny to to like Fetty Wap to I got some Ooh. like some There's like no in there. There's super. No, uh... I have some salsa on there. I have some hard rock stuff on there. Have some ranchera, uh, no, 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 that stuff. No, uh, I don't think so. Not yet, maybe. I know I have some shit, Elton John. Drop. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I got like, okay. Ev- like, cra- like you, like you would never believe. Like, I got some crazy stuff. Also, I love because I have some stuff on there that I've never heard. There's, you know, some, some salsa artists that I'm not familiar with because they're like from Colombia mm. or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I love that. I love like hearing other people's shit. And some and some is surprising, like, you know, uh, had some really had some really young people on and what they had on. So I love it. But, yeah, it's like about two, three hours of everyone's stuff. Queen Bohemian Rhapsody, is that in there? No, that's not on there. I don't think so. That's not on there. Um, I'm so sorry. No problem. Yes. You're sick. Salud. Salud. But Thank you. Nas is that's... on there a lot. Um, Nas has been said a lot. Um, who else? Um, MOP it, anti up is always on. That's like a, a regular. People always say that. Linkin Park has a a song. <clears throat> I'm gonna change my pick now. Now that it's <laughs> <I'll take> it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we could add two. We could add two. It's called From the Inside. The, the Linkin Park. Okay, it's such a good record. I think it's Meteora. The album from the inside. Okay, I'm gonna add that rest one. Rest in peace, Chester. Brandon. Right, oh, rest God. in peace. Yeah, and it, it's crazy because you know my my son, the supernatural bear. He'll have a segment on here after this. Um, he, you know he's heavy into Transformers and they use a lot of their music. So then he started listening to it, and so he's asking me, you know, especially because he knows that his mom and dad come from like the music industry, and he's like, I don't know. He was like five four or five and he was asking me and then I had to like you know tell him about suicide. Oh explain what happens. Yeah you know old, what I mean? Chester situation. Yeah yeah yeah. It yeah. was awful. Yeah. Especially if they they had just finished um God I forgot the name of the record which is terrible. They have finished a record that a song that Chester wrote um because he was very close friends with Chris Cornell. Mm-hmm. And in the record R. R. it's like Telling people that, you know, you matter, your life matters. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm, I'm so mad I don't remember this. It was their last album together. But it was it makes it even sadder because that happened. 
when he was producing this. It's called Heavy, the song. Yeah. Sucks. One More Night is the name of the album. And they're and they're both gone. And it and it, it sucks. Yep. And I was just I just it's made a, a new playlist for um one of my for my son and my and one of my nephews because he was into rock and he's like, Oh, I just found like Led Zeppelin or someone introduced me to Led Zeppelin. He's like 14. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to make you a playlist wow. of all the, I'm going to make you a playlist of classic rock. It has to have a heavy drum, heavy, heavy guitar from like the sixties and, and, and now. And I was like, and I'm going to make you a playlist of rock, but also it's going to be female heavy and it's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, black and brown band mm -hmm. heavy. Like, you know, like well, the, the, the Ramones were Latino. Exactly. So it has like the Ramones. It has like at the drive in Mars Volta has living color fishbone. Like it has stuff like that. Um, And then I have the original originator too. Um, What's her name? Uh, Mabel, like the one that Elvis Presley stole from. And like, you know, so wow. it's just like hard rock. Like I'll send you the, I'll put it on the show notes too, but it has like all that stuff. So anyways, I had to have, you know, sound garden on there chris Cornell. he's mm -hmm. always been one of my favorites um mm -hmm. so like yeah had to have all that shit on there so okay last eddie vetter so another guy i like a lot pearl jam and pearl jam when i was in college this one guy took me to pearl i had never heard a single song it was san diego uh, uh -huh. and he took me and that night i bought a poster and i bought their it was like the first album i've been a fan ever since uh -huh. and uh Fantastic. they're they're definitely on there i love and, and black Black is like one of my all time favorite songs ever. <laughs> and it's heart wrenching to me. I love it. Yeah. And I was playing it for my son. He's like, I don't get it. I go, because you're five. This was when he was five. He's 10 now. <laughs> I go, because you're five and you don't know what heartbreak is. You know, if you knew what heartbreak yeah. was, loving someone that doesn't love you back. So, anyways, um, okay. Last question Rick, what would be your legacy? My son and my daughter. Yeah. Whatever they choose to do in life. Uh, I just want to be, I thought I'm not here. I said this, like, I'm not, the funeral is the worst thing. For me. So I, first of all, I want to be cremated. Second of all, mm -hmm. I want them to throw a huge party. When the party's over, they grab my ashes, throw it in the garbage, get rid of it, and then just let me live in peace. But just remember whatever it is that you loved, whatever memory you had, just let that live with you. Yeah. Um, if I was a billionaire, I would want to be known for the guy who helped change people's lives. Mm. That's why at the end of the day, you know, cause my friend that passed away, he changed my life forever. Mm. So I look at 2012 as the year that something crazy happened to me and it just made something click. <laughs> for me. Salut. Thank you. I'm sorry to the audience again if I'm sneezing. No, you don't have to apologize at all. But Weird. yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, I would want to be remembered like that. I want to do something that helps someone some way, some form of fashion. Well, you're already doing that, Rick, because, you know, I was like, just we, the, the, the network just started and you were always from jump, like, Whoever wants to get on and da 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 da, and you need tips. You need that's yeah. what we're. You weren't even supposed to be on. Remember you? It, I think it wasn't even like a guest in the beginning. It was just for you and I to connect. No, it was just a conversation. Right? It was yeah. just a conversation because you're like, no, I got the Listen. tips. I can help you. And I was just like, that is so kind. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know me and you're willing. And I, I already mm -hmm. knew you were busy because you have a successful show. And then you know, I knew you were full time. Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what you did, and it's I knew a you were normal father. show. Yeah. No, it's a successful show. <laughs> and then, so I was just like, wow, you know, he's just like so generous. And so, you know, yeah. you you had a son and you're connecting and the stuff yeah. that you mentioned that, you know, you can't say yet or what you're doing this year. It, it's it's quality shit, Rick. You bring joy. Well, you I, I, could, people, I could announce so the, uh, I could announce the Chicken and Millenni because we already dropped seven episodes. So I'm doing uh, Chicken and Millenni's podcast. It comes out on Wednesdays. Nice. I think we're seven in already. Um, so if you don't know them, they're a social media couple, they put their lives out there on social media, but this gives you a behind the scenes look and they're working through some issues, real life issues Oh, word! through the pod. And we sprinkle in a lot of humor in it. Um, 
they talk about stuff that you've never seen on their Instagram page, like who kissed who first, mm. who made the first move, what's been their biggest fight. Like it's really like uh Chickle has been very vulnerable and I'm so proud mm. of him because he's accepted this process and so has Melanie. So it is really entertaining and fun and engaging to watch. Um, and I'm proud of of that process and where it's at right now. So that's out already. Oh. Um, and it comes out every Wednesday. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. I'm excited to watch it because we can watch it's video, right? It's video. It's called That's Your Reality. And the name derives from when they have an argument. Melanie would always say to Chicklet, well, that's your reality. <laughs> yeah, that's how does. you view things. Yeah, yeah. And um, when we were shopping for a title, it had to be something personal. And, you know, That's we perfect. had three names and me and Chicklet were going back and forth. Then he called me. He's like, yo, is this? Because she always says this. Thing. That's real. And it's been amazing to do. And you guys, you guys are listening and be like, who, who the hell are they talking about? Please believe it. When you see their face, you'll be like, oh, <laughs> you know, you uh, know them. Said, Everybody knows uh, them. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, yeah, shit, he was just in L.A. Yeah, and uh-huh. and you know them because you you've seen their content, you follow them, and you might not know their name. And for sure, for sure, your homie, someone, your family, someone sent you their shit. Like, watch this. Their video. They are, yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. It's like viral. All their stuff is viral. They've been doing it for a long time. So definitely have that. I'm excited to to watch. Anytime that. I do a video with him, it goes like, <laughs> and it amazes me. Like, oh my god, his. His reach is fantastic. <laughs> They're so funny. And, and I'm telling you. And I did like a couple of weeks later, I did a video on my own with my wife. This is natural content in the house. And it did 5.6 million views. Oh, shit. And then I called them like, bro, <laughs> did you just like unlock you rubbed it. off on me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you unlocked it. <laughs> it was it was amazing. It was amazing. It was my oh. wife going into the living room and she says, uh, this is what they look like, lady. Men who don't cheat or something like that. And then my response is, I could cheat if I want to. And she goes, with who? Your diet? So oh. um, it's a very funny sketch. <laughs> uh, well, very viral. I didn't expect that. So <laughs> it was good. Dope. Well, Rick, muchísimas gracias for, for, you know, we finally did no, it. Gracias. Like we Thank finally you. did yeah, it. No. And you, you know, and many. you're and you're sick. So I really, 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 really fucking appreciate it, man. Because you could have been like, you know what, nah. And I would have been like, I totally nah, understand. I can't so do that you. to you. <laughs> I, you know, I felt so awful the first few times, and even when we were gonna have the talks, I was like, man, I gotta try to like. I sat down with somebody, and I was like, nah, but I gotta sit down with Rick because you were the first one to hit me up. And I was like, yeah, I want to sit with her. I want to let her know what I do. Maybe it could work for her. It's just an idea. Um, yeah, so I'm always here, though, for for advice and stuff like that. I still give advice to other podcasters that are not even on our network. Wow. Um, and they kidding, also man. like, they no, but they also give me ideas. Yeah. So it's like really the best thing in the world is to know the people in your industry, have a great relationship with them. See. Because you never know, like. You know, like we, uh, Ivan's on the network now, but Ivan always gives me like social media tips because he has an amazing following and um, a really good engagement. So he always gives me great tips to follow. So the network, you got a network, not it's a village this network, but you, but you got a network <laughs> with your own. Yeah, for sure. Peers. For sure. So muchísimas gracias, mm-hmm. Rick. I'm excited. This, you, you know, whenever you want to come on, I. It's open. It's open. And I'm excited Likewise, to share all your stuff, you know? You know, I'm going to save it because uh, if you're in New York, let me know when and we'll do it. In, I'm going to be shooting in person. So, yeah, I'll still do virtual for, you know, my West Coast people when I have yeah. people on from the West Coast. But um, I want to do more in person stuff. Yeah, let's I wanna do it. I want to see the people again. Yes. Touch and oh, feel my. them. Oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody said, who, I forgot, this. Oh, I'll never shake somebody's hand. This was wild curve. curve was, I was like, you're kidding me? I can't wait to shake somebody's hand. <laughs> like, it's humanity, bro. Like, I'll never shake somebody's hand. Oh, my God, the cooties. That's that's what I thought, right? Until 
you go mm. to a, la- a Latino event and then it's like the beso, it's the hug, it's the whole thing. Oh, man, You're just I'm like, hug. forget about it. I caught right. it all. I caught it all. Oh, <laughs> I'm definitely a hugger. I know I'm a big time hugger. <laughs> Me too. Well, I'm excited to see There's you in person. Like... Yeah. Thank you. What were we going to say? Nothing like what? No, I, there's nothing like a like a good. You could tell the ju- a hug is genuine. I'm a genuinely hugger. yeah. You could feel it. So. You look like a good yeah. hugger, Rick. I, yeah, like, I am very. You look like if we chubby. work together, if we you're not even you're not chubby. You very look warm, like if we work you know? together, you would be my go to for but, hugs. I had a friend. Yeah. I would accept friend it. Was, I would accept it. My friend, Mr. D. Shout out to Mr. D. When my when my husband was uh, on tour. I'll be like, oh, I need a hug, Mr. D. Just a hug. Nothing, nothing about it. You know, he's family. You look like that. You look like you get because he gives the best hugs. Is, is this is the Seth Rogen, uh, J- Jonah Hill look like <laughs> reference? <laughs> no. I am that pretty big. Bear hugging. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now introducing the Supernatural Bear Corner. Supernatural Bear. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Supernatural Bear Corner. I am the Supernatural Bear for a late night segment being recorded at 9, 10 at night. Yes. Um, I'm about to go to sleep right now. Just relax and chill and then sleep. So, um, not much to say today <laughs> besides the fact that that Mr. Rick and my mom have been trying to do this for way too long. Um, but yeah, it finally happened. Yay! And it didn't get canceled or postponed for the 47th time. Yay! Um, in other news, for the about one person who cares, um, there is a season two of the Transformers show, Transformers Earthspark, coming on March 3rd. So about less than a month now, which I'm incredibly excited about. Um, because the trailer's out, looks pretty cool so far, and I'm excited to watch it and nerd out about it. Yes. Um, but yeah, just a short segment today, and um, hopefully see you guys next week. I'm not sure what next week's schedule is for the podcast but yeah hopefully next week guys um anyway yeah see you and stay safe yeah there you have it folks episode 117 of word to your mama rick h please check out all the links in the show notes, I'm going to have a link to his show, uh, a link to Ricky Smooth, uh, a link to when uh, me, Pavel, and another one of the Latina Podcasters Network were live on the Rick H show. Um, oh, you know what? I got to add a link to Jazz, who was his former co-host who just left. Uh, the comedian he was talking about, she was a guest on Word to Your Mama. So I'm going to have a link to that, of course. You know, all the things we talked about. Muchísimas um, gracias again to Rick H. He was a trooper for being sick, as you can hear. Um, you know, uh, some sneezing and stuff. So I really appreciate his time. And I'm hella hyped to go to NYC in April and hopefully, uh, you know, chop it up, be on a show, even if not, like, just break bread with him and the hip-hop advocates and someone that I'm going to have on the sh- that Rick already recorded with that's going to be on in a couple of weeks who also ha- uh, hails from Queens. Um, you guys will love that episode as well, so I'm hoping to have, like, a, a reunion of, of Queens, of Queens folks so yes you guys know the drill you know what to do hit us up with any questions hola at wordtoyourmama.com uh become a patron buy something from the store um buy us a whiskey via 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 some coffee all that good stuff and uh you know what's free is tell your folks tell your peeps tell your friends and as always we reap Word to Your Mama is owned and produced by Ritzy P. Intro Beat, produced by Nico Beats. 
If you want to know more, uh, you want to email us, you want to get the media kit, go head over to wordtoyourmama.com. Word to Your Mama is now part of the Latina Podcasters Network. And as always, Word to Your Mama is brought to you by RitzBarrowWinkle.com.